She's going to need it in the days ahead. Of course. Geraldine, would you mind if I came over there uh, before going to my office? In fact, would you mind if both Nancy and I came over there? I'm always delighted to see you and Nancy. You know that. I can't guarantee that Raven will be awake. She'll probably sleep until noon, as usual. <laughs> but under the circumstances, I suppose it's the best thing. Yes. Well, we'd like to see you anyway. Mike, I... I want to talk to you myself. There has been a new development. Something that may be more important to Raven than the practical joke that was played on her. What do you mean? Well, you remember my speaking to you about the man who looks so amazingly like Skyler. Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, Nancy and I were talking about him just last night. Uh, Nancy's quite curious to meet him. Now, Raven hasn't met him herself. She almost did last night. He telephoned and wanted to come over, but I refused. I thought she'd had quite enough shock to last her for a long time. I hate to repeat myself, but I don't feel that I have anything to prove to you. So why do you feel you have to prove anything to me? I do, Mallory. It's important to me. Why? You've already decided that I was the one who was conspiring against you with Jeff Brown. Just listen to the tape, please. blank. I don't understand. Neither do I. Well, I, I don't... Well, I've been tricked somehow. Are you sure I'm not the one who's been tricked? No. No, I... Raven Whitney confessed into this tape recorder tonight. She confessed the fact that she's been living a lie all these months that she's been calling herself Mrs. Skylar Whitney. Really true? Yes. The tape is gone. The confession is gone. It's all gone. That's one kind of burglary for sure, and with the Endicott job, that's two. I think we really got him this time. Good. Yeah, I think you're right. I think this should keep Vincent Green out of circulation. Yeah. You know, that guy really should have chosen a different profession. I mean, keeping all that loot in his apartment was just plain stupid. You know why he get that stuff? Because no self-respecting fence would touch it. I mean, old toasters, broken TV sets. <laughs> this character even had a box of silver plate with the initials of the original owner still engraved in it. Well, whoever said burglars are smart, I suppose if they were, they wouldn't be burglars. Yeah. But you know, Chief, there is one thing in this case, just one thing that just doesn't seem to fit. Yeah, what's that? Well, now, all of Green's jobs have a certain kind of pattern. I mean, they're always on the ground floor. They're always in low-rent neighborhoods like mine. Yeah, so? Well, the Endicott Gallery is on the first floor, but the location is definitely uptown plus. Maybe he's trying to bring himself up in the world. Chief, come on. Look, all this guy ever stole was loose cash, watches, jewelry, uh, TV sets, anything he could get some quick cash for on the street. Then all of a sudden, he robs an art gallery. I mean, that is a little peculiar, isn't it? Yeah, it's peculiar, but I don't... I don't know that it's significant. Yeah, well, maybe, as you say, he was just looking for some culture. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think he had that culture thrust upon him. Yes, Helen. Yes, I know who that is. Hold on a second. How long will it take you to type up this report? Eh, maybe half hour. All right, would you get to it? Sure. 
sediment. Mr. Diedrichsen, I hope you have something good for me. Chief, I've got the best news. I found Raven. She's at home. She's safe in the mansion. All right, I'm glad to hear that. And not just for her sake. Oh, I'm really relieved. All right, come on, let's have the story. Where was she and just what does she know about what you clowns were doing to her? She knows everything. And I think the first order of business is for you to take a patrol car over to the old precinct house. What do you mean, send a patrol car over there? You knew that place was being demolished. What? That place was leveled last night. It's nothing more than dust now. What? I've got Smiley in that cell where Raven was. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> what is all this? Well, it's breakfast. Breakfast? Yeah. Sorry, I never heard of it. Well, my father used to say it was the most important meal of the day. Of course, uh, he drove a truck for a company that made breakfast cereal. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, I've always thought that a good old-fashioned oh. breakfast is the best thing in the world, and I just never bothered to make it for myself. That's a bachelor for you. <laughs> What's the matter? You don't like bachelors? Oh, I love them. There just aren't enough of them. Well, how many do you need? Mm, well, right now, uh... Oh, silly boy. <laughs> One is enough. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of that. I've got a lot of work in there I've got to do. Breakfast. Breakfast, breakfast. <laughs> uh, you know, this has never happened to me before. I bet. No, I mean, uh, nobody's ever thought enough to, you know, stick around in the morning to make breakfast for me. Oh, don't kid me, lover. I'll bet you have your friends making you breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You know, Poppy, you sound a little different this morning. <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, slowly but surely, you're beginning to lose that cute little voice of yours. I don't know what you're talking about, sugar. Look, how do you like your legs? <laughs> Baby, I don't know. Oh. How do you like your eggs? I like mine on a plate. <laughs> there you go again. You know, sometimes I think you might be trying to kid somebody. You never use the same voice twice in a row. Well, a girl's got to improve herself, right, mm -hmm. sweetie? I mean, look. I went to night school and everything. Now, just, just wait a minute. Hold on. I what? want you to tell me what this dumb little redhead game you're playing is all about. This is deliberate, isn't it? Look, Damien. If a girl is smart, she talks and acts the way the people expect her to talk and act. Well, well, that is if she wants to make a decent living. <laughs> I thought <laughs> women weren't supposed to feel that way anymore. Some women, maybe. Not Poppy Johnson. Well, what makes you so different? Because I was born different. I was raised different. Because I know what I want. And I, uh, I know what I have to do to get it. Now, well, tell me, Poppy, just what do you want? For example, what do you think you're going to get out of working for that creep Betty Lorm? Hey, I told you last night. I don't want to talk about Eddie, okay? Why? Because you're afraid I'll make you realize what a crook the guy is? You already know that. Look, will you cut it out? I mean, I thought we had a deal. You said that, that once that we That was I... last night. This is this morning. It's broad daylight. It's easier to see the truth than daylight, isn't it? So that's why you wanted me to stay, so you could start in on me again. Look, we can't pretend that Eddie Lorimer doesn't exist, that he's not a crook, and that he didn't try to frame me. You know something? I think I'll let you eat alone. Oh, no, you won't. You just wait a minute. Look. I don't understand. How can you be who you were last night and be this person you are this morning? Just wait. Excuse me. I've got to get dressed. I still have a job to go to. Oh, yeah. It's not just a job, is it? You're not just Eddie Lorimer's secretary. You're his partner in crime. <laughs> Of course, I want you to keep looking. This takes priority. I don't care what the timetable says. If they want to squawk, you have them call me to squawk. No hope, huh? If you are hoping for a miracle, forget about it. That place was leveled brick by brick. Wilson never had a chance. 
It's four lives in this thing. And I'm responsible for this last one. Well, Wilson dug his own grave, although I do have to say, you sure handed him a shovel. <sighs> I didn't know. All those bulldozers in that lot, they could have been used for excavation. Oh, no, you did what you had to do. Saving Raven was important. I never would have left him there. I wanted to punish him. I wanted to make him feel like Raven felt when she was in that cell. All right, look, forget about it. From what you told me, it really wasn't your fault. What I want to know now is about Hector Wilson. We know he died in New York. We know he went there disguised as a policeman. Did this have anything to do with Raven? Yeah, it had everything to do with Raven. He was after her. And he was using a police uniform because he thought it would open a few extra doors. Well, that opened the door to Whoopi Thorne's travel agency into a lot more troubles than he could handle. Raven told me something interesting. She said that Hector saved her life. That makes him kind of a hero in this thing. Well, that's something I'll have to ask her about when I see her. Do you know why she came back to Monticello? She knew the truth, at least part of it. Now, what do you mean, part of it? Well, this is gonna hurt a little bit, Chief. Yeah? It has to do with your wife. What about my wife? Well, Smiley picked her up at the airport. And he took her directly to the gravesite to prove to her that she was dead. Yeah, all right. Maybe I ought to go out there again myself. Maybe then I'll believe she's dead, too. Libby, what she wants. I'm not about to do that, Spencer. All she's asking for is a promise that she won't see Valerie Bryson again. I won't promise that. Well, then lie to her. I don't, I'm, I'm not gonna lie either, Spencer. Well, tell her what she wants to hear. We need that tape back, Skyler. It's all we have. Maybe if I can see Raven, maybe if I get a Raven, hold of her. Raven, what for? Well, she doesn't know that we don't have the confession anymore, that the tape is missing. Maybe I can talk to her. Maybe I can oh, get her to admit it again. She will not admit it again. You don't know that woman. Well, you gotta try it, Spencer. Well, now look, you either go to, to work on Libby, or you let me do it. Oh, you're gonna get rough with Libby? I mean, she's not an idiot, Spencer. You try doing that, she's gonna destroy the tape. Then I'll, I'll have nothing. I may as well be dead and buried right next to Jeff Brown. <sighs> Jeff Brown. Hey, Spencer. Yes? You know, I think I may just have a solution here. But what really concerns me is what's gonna happen next. That concerns me too, my dear. Now, I don't condone anything that was done to Raven. However, I do know how those people felt when she took the theater away from them. Come to think of it, didn't you try to intervene on their behalf, Nancy? Yes, yes, I did. But Raven was so convinced uh, that Gavin Wiley was guilty of murder, I mean, in spite of any evidence. So the joke did have a practical purpose, to make Raven see the light. Right. Obviously, they staged uh, something to resemble the, the situation that incriminated Gavin. If it were that simple, it might have been easier to forgive. But it wasn't. It went completely too far. I must tell you that it is not the joke that is uppermost in Raven's mind. It's something else. Something devastating has taken place. It seems that... No. I shouldn't be telling you this. It's something Raven will have to tell you herself. Oh, that's a dangerous toy. Why don't you put it away? Spencer told you to get rid of it, I'm told, but you decided to keep it, I see. Why shouldn't I? It belongs to me. Close the door. I said, close the door. Would you please tell me what this is all about? Well, that's very simple. It's about murder. Are you mad? No, I'm not mad. I'm not angry. I'm not sad. I'm not concerned about life, and I'm not concerned about death. When you go through certain experiences, you end up with that reaction to things. I believe combat veterans must have something like it. I see. This is a threat, is it? You think you can frighten me into giving you that tape? 
The tape, yes, the tape. I hope you still do have the tape. You haven't destroyed it, have you? You know how you can get it, Sky. Make me that promise. How do you know that I would be telling you the truth? I'd know, my darling. That's what Spencer said, yes. Give me that thing. Don't try it. It won't work. Do you think murder will? Then pull the trigger. Pull the trigger, Sky. Kill me. You think it'll mean that much to me? It won't. You see, I don't care that much about being alive. You're lying, Libby. You want to live very much. <laughs> You're right. But not as much as you do, Skye. And if you kill me, your future won't be much either, will it? Prison life is never much fun, I hear. Give me that tape. No, darling. The tape is going with me tonight. Where are you going? Back to Switzerland. I'm taking the afternoon flight to Zurich. <laughs> Unless, of course, you kill me. The choice is yours. Give me that tape. No. All right. You were right before. Prison life is unbearable for women as well as men. What are you talking about? What do you think the police will think when they dig the bullet out from the couch and match it with the one that they dig from the body of Jeff Brown? Uh, yes, operator. Get me the police, please. What do you think that the police will do then? speak with her yet? Yes, I did. She's in packing her bags now for a trip to Zurich. Skyler, we can't let her go. Oh, yes, we can. Yes, we can. You see, one of the things that she is not packing is this. A tape? Oh, thank God she came to her senses. Yes, that's right. Sky, regardless of what Libby has done, we wouldn't be where we are without her. I see that chivalry is not dead. She worked very hard to get us where we are. She stuck by you. She believed in you even after we discovered there was another Skylar Whitney. Yes, that's right. She certainly took care of him, didn't she? She did what she thought was right. She saved that woman's life. Come on, Spencer. You don't really expect me to feel sympathetic towards her. Raven Whitney is a greater threat to us than Jeff Brown ever was. That's all right. See, I've got her trapped right in here. And now, now I know that I can solve everything. Then you will get in touch with me when Raven is ready to talk. I promise, Mike, but be tolerant. She may need a few days to get her bearings. Oh, I'm sure there's no hurry right now. Her health is most important. Hmm? I agree. Geraldine, I am very curious about that man. You know, Skyler's look-alike. I wonder, um... When you hear from him next, could you arrange for me to meet him? But of course, my dear. Oh, thank you very much, dear. All right. Honey, don't you think we should be going? Yes, we should. Thank you so much for coming by. Thank you, Geraldine. Goodbye. Bye-bye. I simply couldn't tell them, Raven. I couldn't. Hello. Mr. Saxon, it's Spencer Barney. Yes, Spencer. I wanted to see how you were. I regret having left you alone in the house. But I wasn't alone. Raven is back. Back where she belongs. Yes, I'm 
glad she's back, Mrs. Saxon, but unfortunately, it's not where she belongs. What do you mean? I thought she might have told you by now, but for no matter, you'll be hearing the whole story very soon. What are you talking about, Spencer? Your nephew, Skylar Whitney, is coming to pay you a visit. Mm -hmm.